Welcome Jackie Jordan, Emmy-nominated television producer, author of Get On TV, and the recent book Heartfelt Marketing, allowing the universe to be your business partner. Founder of TVGuestBert.com. We are the crowd. Hi, I'm Jackie Jordan. Good Friday afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us on your drive this afternoon. We're hosted here by TVGuestbert.com, and uh, today we're sponsored by CX2Wristband.com. We're the industry show with the experts, and we repeat here tonight at 10 p.m. and on Sundays at 5 p.m. Again, it's AM 1290 KZSB News Press Radio, Santa Barbara, and on the homepage of TVGuestbert.com and also on Sony's Blip TV. If you want to friend us, you can join us on Facebook at Jackie Jordan Inc., TVGuestbert.com. And our sponsor today, again, is CX2 wristband.com. They are the non-pharmaceutical wristband or hologram chip that helps you sleep at night and gives you energy during the day. And I'm joined in the uh, studio here with studio producer Richard Dugan and uh, executive producer Richard Weiner. And I can tell both of you gentlemen that I use those sleep chips. And I'm already a good sleeper, but my dream state is far more better <laughs> with those uh, sleep chips. Uh, we have a really exciting show today, and so thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about um, the cast, you know, casting. Uh, my, I've got, I'm big fans of our, our first guests today. It's uh, Janet, Jane Jenkins and Janet Hershenson of The Casting Company, and they've got a great book out um, that is called A Star is Found, Our Adventures, casting some of the Hollywood's biggest movies. They have got the best stories. Forget the tabloids. These two ladies have the best stories. And I had the privilege of uh, producing them a couple years ago as a showrunner for Sunday Morning Shootout, um, when an industry talk show. And, you know, it's one of those... Uh, categories that still has not gotten a Oscar nomination. I'm going to ask them about that too. Also in the hour, we're going to have Bob Stewart, who is the, uh, who does Casting Now, which is a company that works in scripted program that's kind of like what we do at tvgespert.com, but they match actors to TVs and movies and made-for-TV movies and such, whereas we match experts with unscripted programming such as television, television news shows and talk shows. And then finally, this hour, we have Gespert, um, which she's our sexy expert, Miyoko Fujimori, who has uh, been cast on several reality shows, including uh, a style expert on style Style Network show, What I Hate About Me as a Romance Specialist. What I Hate About Me as a Romance Specialist. Anyway, she's got some good stories for us. So let us get started. Let's talk about the undervalued and, and probably un, um, probably underappreciated casting job in Hollywood. Joining me on the phone right now is Jane Jenkins and Janet Hershenson. If there is anybody to know in this business, these two ladies, as far as I'm concerned, are like the unsung hero of the whole business, and they are the ones that you would want to know. If I were an actor or a budding actor, these would be the people that I would want to rub up against. Jane Jenkins, Janet Hershenson, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Hi, Jackie. So nice to be with you. Yeah. Good, to, good to be here. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. I love your stories. I, I love um, the stories that you have. Um, and you've been, you both have been doing this. First off, I love the collaboration. You both almost have been partners for 20, 25 plus years. Is that safe well, to say? Well, actually, it's, it's now going 30 on plus. 30 plus years. I was going to let you use that number. <laughs> <laughs> 30 plus. <laughs> that, and that is so fantastic. So uh, you and you have cast for some of the, uh, so, you know, some of the great film directors from you know Francis Ford Coppola, uh, Ron Howard, and Brian Grazer. In fact, for Ron Howard and Brian Grazer, you're most you're really their go-to girls. You know, it's been a wonderful collaboration. I I, I met uh, Brian many many years ago before I was in casting. I was working for John Peters and Barbara Streisand when they were doing A Star Is Born, and and Brian was a, a young up and coming agent. And he would come around to the office with scripts that he would get me to read and, and, you know, get them to John Peters. So we had a relationship. And then when he went into business with Ron Howard, uh, they called and asked if uh, we would cast the first movie that they did together, which was Night Shift. Wow. And, and that was in 1980 or 81. And uh, it's been a wonderful relationship ever since then. And we just uh, finished a, a film called The Dilemma with Vince Vaughn. And Kevin James that's coming out in January, so Ron in, is busy doing the final touches on that. And then come the first of the year, we're going to get started 
on a huge uh, Stephen King um, series of, of books called Dark Tower that we're going to get into. So it's been an amazing collaboration for all these years. And not only is it an amazing collaboration, you kind of dispel a lot of the myths of Hollywood because you guys get along really well. You've been doing this for a long time. It's, it's remarkably creative. Has the casting process changed a lot for the two of you in the 30 years, uh, either with technology or with celebrity personality well, kind of the the what what we do uh, it hasn't really changed the technology has changed sort of how we do it i think more than anything what are some of your best casting stories <laughs> um well i remember uh first meeting alec baldwin it was in in the 80s i was doing she's having a baby for john hughes and we he was a new new actor in town from new york and I met him, and at the, that time I was looking for a, a um, charming cad for She's Having a Baby. I still love that movie. I do, too. <laughs> I still, I do when too. I see it come up on TV, I love it. I love the soundtrack to the movie. Mm-hmm. I love Alec mm-hmm. Baldwin in that movie. That's just a great movie. I know, and, I, and it was when I met him, and it was I didn't even read him at first. I just thanked the casting gods and got him into John, and John liked him. Wasn't sure, and eventually, and then when we did the callbacks to for people to read with Kevin Bacon and Elizabeth McGovern, first he wasn't going to bring him back, and John actually let me insist that we bring him back. I mean, he you know, so, and uh, and he read with uh, Kevin and John wasn't so sure, and he left, and he said, "Well, what do you think?" And all the women in the room were there with their mouths open. Was Elizabeth, me, and John's wife, and Elizabeth said. Well, I think my character might think of uh, getting involved with him, and he said, "Really?" And we all went, "Yeah." And then my husband, who was wrangling the actors, had to go chase him out over a parking lot. It was at a hotel because we did that at a hotel. This is your husband, Michael Hershenson, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so he went running and grabbed Alec and brought him back, and we read again and eventually got the part. Oh, isn't that? Funny mm-hmm. and too bad uh, that you know that uh, John Hughes has passed because he was uh, he's he, his movies were so great in the eighties. Oh, absolutely! Uh, I had I had a ball working with it was wild wild wacky ride working with John. I loved every minute of it. Yeah, and you know, and such sustainable actors came out of his uh, that genre of films. Oh well, yeah, he was really just sort of the epitome of there are no small parts, you know, and he yes loved sort of the the minute detail of casting really interesting people, even for the pizza boy. Um, Every single little part to him was really a gem, and he paid such close attention to the smallest parts. It was really a delight working with him in that way. It it was great when when there was an actor that he loved. I'd glance out of the corner of my eyes, and he would get such a grin on his face. It was just, uh, he, it, w- it was really delightful. But it was, uh, those days we didn't do a lot of videotapes, so I don't have anything on tape of the, about that. Oh, could you imagine what you, yeah, could you imagine what uh, stories you could tell with uh, <laughs> old audition footage? Um, so who, have you ever had to fight a director where you, where you know an actor or somebody is really right for the part? And, you know, you, you have to, like, you know, strong arm a director into either taking a second or third look at them? Well, there isn't so much a fighting as a cajoling, you know. <laughs> when, <laughs> when we were doing, Great reframing. <laughs> <laughs> when, when we were doing Ghost, um, you know, I, I literally could hear Whoopi Goldberg's voice when I read the script, and I assumed that they had already hired her because she was so perfect for the part. But nobody was all that interested in her at that time, and Jerry Zucker said, well, she's a possibility, but I'd really like to see who else is out there. And we'd meet actress after actress, many of whom were really quite fabulous. And he would say, no, that's not it. And so then it became sort of a joke, and I would say, so what about Whoopi Goldberg? And it was like an ongoing theme for two and a half months. It was, so what about Whoopi Goldberg? And then finally he agreed to meet with Whoopi. And, uh, you know, he, he, met, he and Patrick actually flew to wherever she was shooting a, a film with uh, Sissy Spacek on the East Coast someplace in Atlanta, or I can't remember where. And they fl- the two of them flew, met with her in the lounge at the airport, and he, he came back. He said, I don't know what I was thinking of. <laughs> Perfect. But, you know, so sometimes it just takes a while to come back to what was clearly the most perfect person on the planet to play that part. 
It's so I, I understand that. I, I call that in, uh, call that in producing creating contrast. Jane Jenkins, Janet Hershenson, stay with us. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Break. Uh, we'll be right back. If I ever get the nerve to say hello in this cafe. The Jackie Jordan Show with host Jackie Jordan on TVGuestBird.com. Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara and worldwide. Marry me. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, fight his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Details Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. The Jackie Jordan Show, presented by TVGuestBert.com on News Press Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara. I'll be the backstage at the show, velvet ropes and guitars, yeah, cause you're my rock star in between the sets. Hi, I'm Jackie Jordan, here's hosted here by TVGuestBert.com and sponsored by CX2 Wristband.com. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on your drive home. And I am um, in the middle of a conversation with, uh, I'm their biggest fan, uh, Jane, Jane Jenkins and Janet Hershenson of the casting company. They are one of the two most powerful and uh, influential Hollywood uh, ladies because they um, get the actors and the actresses their parts. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it the two of you that put Julia Roberts in Mystic Pizza? It mm-hmm. is. Yes. We, it, we are those people. <laughs> I mean, I was, a, you know, I was a teenager when I saw that movie, and I was mesmerized by her. And then you also cast Tom Cruise pretty early on, too. Yes, we, we cast Tom Cruise in The Outsiders. Yeah, that... Which was just before, and actually he couldn't do some added scenes for The Outsiders uh, because he was off doing risky business a couple months later. Oh, isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah, like, I, you know, I think that... You know, I know that you two have a book that you wrote called A Star Is Found, Our Adventures Casting Some of Hollywood's Biggest Movies. But I really think a movie should be written around about the two of you because, <laughs> you know, it's, it's such a, you, you, you ha- you've had your finger on all of these fantastic, great Who would play us, Jackie? Oh, <laughs> yeah, Julia Roberts. Would be ourselves, <laughs> Julia Roberts. And, uh, I think that would be just desserts. <laughs> I think that would be... Well, really what, good. Well, what do you think about Anne Hathaway and James Franco as um, hosts for the upcoming Oscars uh, 2011? I have to say, I kind of love it. I think that it's daring and different, and the two of them are not just actors. I think that, you know, last wasn't it last year on the, um, the Academy Awards that she was singing and dancing and carrying on? So I, I think it's a great idea to go a little out of the box and not have a comedian. I always wondered, why did Bob Hope, who wasn't really a film actor as much as he was a comic, how come he did that all those years successfully? But I think it's great that they're shaking it up and, and making it a little different. Yeah, I think it's great. First I went, really? And then I went, well, yeah. <laughs> and it really makes a lot of sense. And the two of them are smart and charming, and I think it's a great idea. I had the same reaction. I thought, oh, really? And then uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, that does make sense. Like, yeah, really. <laughs> it does really make sense. And so who is advocating for the category in the, for the Academy Awards for Best Casting? Only well, us, unfortunately, I think. unfortunately, no one. Um, <laughs> you know, we have the, the casting directors have been trying for it's like 20 years now to establish a category for casting, you know, casting for a feature film. And the Academy just refuses to do it. They have come up with so many excuses that it's the director who makes the final choices. And I continue to argue that the director makes the final choices about the costumes and about the sets and about the hairdos and about the makeup and every aspect of the filmmaking. Absolutely. Course, the director that makes the final choice, but it is a collaborative effort. And then they don't want the show to go any longer than it's already going. And, you know, I, I actually had somebody at the Academy say, well, if you already have Big Mr. Movie Star attached to your movie... Why would you get an award? I said, for the other 100 people he has to talk to. Right. So, you know, I think that eventually there are inroads. There are now three different Emmys for, you know, for TV series and for pilot casting and for movies, TV movies. And 
the the Spirit Awards acknowledge the casting director, and people are so much more aware that there is a casting process and a casting director that I think. I, I hope I live long. Well, let me year. ask you: Have but we I have, think someday has, there will be? Uh, have we, as an industry, given you your uh, your uh, star on the hall, Walk of Fame? Because you certainly would at least <laughs> deserve that. <laughs> Do you get followed or recognized? Or no. I mean, because you you have that very powerful, understated, um, you know, influence in the industry. Because you've got the ear, and you're um, the 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 gatekeeper to getting a lot of actors their breaks their starts jobs you know do you, i would just picture you getting followed out of restaurants all of the time <laughs> nobody knows what we look like we're we're sort of really behind the scenes sort of people um and i it, think it, that's it, a good it, thing uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you, who do you, who do you think in terms of talent who is going to be like our next breakout who do you have your eye on right now anybody on the international scene that you see coming? i think michael fassbender Oh who yeah, is going to be is going to be the next really big hot thing. You know, it's funny because in the course of the time that I I've known you, you have always called it um, in terms of talent. You know, who's coming up and and who's who's going out. What was it like? Um, you know, working with Francis Ford Coppola. It was a joy. <laughs> and you ate well and drank well besides. <laughs> Actually, the last, last thing we did, we helped out a couple weeks on something, and we got paid in wine. We got cases of wine. It was <laughs> so wonderful. <laughs> that, is, that is so fun. That is so fun. Did you enjoy the whole process of putting together your book, A oh, Star yeah. Was Found? Yeah, it was a very interesting, long, long process. It took way longer than we ever envisioned it would take, but it was great to sort of go back and really think about all those projects and re- recall all those stories. It was it must was have been about two experience. years that we were on the phone with with our or their collaborator and just throwing stories around and and it'd be sometimes things. God, we hadn't thought about that in ages. Uh, it was uh, it was very interesting. What's the most fun? What's the best part of the job for you? Well, I love it when there's an actor who's sort of the underdog and and not a known entity and they get the part, and that phone call that you make to the agent when the agent starts crying, they're so deliriously happy, yes. it's just the greatest feeling in the world, you know? It's, uh, it's really a thrill to put it all together. Who do you think are going to be our um, um, outstanding or best performers this year for the, uh, the, uh, the Oscars? Oh, my God. Right. I think there's some amazing performances, and I think for sure that... Uh, James Franco will be nominated both, you know, between his work in Howl, yes. which is a little movie that a lot of people haven't seen, but I thought it was one of the most extraordinary performances I have ever seen, and his work in 127 hours, for sure he'll get nominated. And I think that the guys in both of the, the actors, Jeffrey Rush and, um, and, and it's a total blank, in uh, The King's Speech. Colin Firth. Colin, Colin Firth, Firth, thank you so much, Janet. Um, <laughs> it's just a beautiful movie. Really a beautiful film. And I think Natalie Portman is going to get a nomination for her work in, in Black Swan. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Oh, and another one, uh, Jennifer Lawrence from Winter's Bone. I don't think oh. she's nominated, but she and is. Winter's I, I Bone met her a couple is, years ago. I was like, watch this one. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Well, Winter's Bone has just, just won the uh, 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 an award in New York. Mm-hmm. And it is, uh, I'm shocked that it hasn't sort of come back now that it's yeah. Academy season. Because I thought it was an extraordinary movie. Another actor, the actor John Hawks is in Winter Bo- Winter's Bone. I remember meeting him about 12 years ago. The first thing we put in was Bicentennial Man. And just his acting ability blew me away. I mean, we, bought, we met him and we were like, wow. I mean, mm-hmm. he's just one of the great actors. And a couple of years later, we got to put him in Perfect Storm. And he is just, he's fabulous. Yeah, it's a film that everybody should see if you, if you can find it again. You know, I'm sure it'll be get a re-release now that uh, it's won a couple of awards. Well, Jane Jenkins and Janet Hershenson, we'd love to have you back with the casting company. They are the author of A Star is Found, Our Adventures, casting some of Hollywood's biggest movies. Both of you, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Our executive producer, thank you. Richard Wayner, who's here is looking. He's like, yeah, you can tell that, they're pretty, that you're really tight, and you guys are. So um, <laughs> thank you for the great work and bringing us all that great talent and entertainment all these years. Thank you for having us. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. And I'm Jackie Jordan, presented by TVGuestbert.com, and we'll be right back. The Jackie Jordan Show, with host Jackie Jordan on TVGuestbert.com. Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara, and worldwide. Forever can never be long enough for me. 
feel like I've had long enough with you. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned, and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, find his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Details Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. The Jackie Jordan Show, presented by TVGuestBert.com on News Press Radio KZSB 1290 AM, Santa Barbara. I'm Jackie Jordan, hosted here by TVGuestBert.com and sponsored today by CX2 wristband.com and though that CX2 wristband.com is the sleep wristband that uh, the wristband that helps you sleep they also have a hologram non-pharmaceutical chip that helps you sleep and uh, also gives you energy during the day and I have used it frequently and it's turns my already healthy sleep life into epic dreaming so I highly recommend it uh, we've been talking uh, we just uh, we we're talking earlier about the casting process and joining us now on the phone is Bob Stewart he's the founder and CEO of Now Casting and CEO of Players Directory. Um, and he uh, runs a professional resource center for casting directors to find actors, see demo reels, manage their auditions, and send their auditions to studio execs, directors, producers, networks, and uh, everyone else involved in the casting process. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. What I um, like about your company is, it, first off, it's of particular interest because it's it's got a similar m paradigm model to TVGuestBert.com where we uh, we get experts and we hook them up with unscripted programming such as talk shows and news and we do the media development behind them. Tell us a little bit about Now Casting and the Players Directory. Well, Now Casting was formulated when I came here as an actor. There weren't a lot of resources for actors to be able to see what was going on. And the entertainment industry, for some reason, is very technophobic. So things were taken naturally in, we all do things online, and had done the things online for years, but the casting directors and the studios we were really slow in coming around to it. So we came up with a way to allow actors to put their headshots, resumes, and demo reels online, and the casting directors can receive their submissions, they can organize their auditions, the actors can actually audition and then tie those to the profile and they can send all of those anywhere in the world instantly as opposed to having to do it with uh, sending it out through FedEx or something like that. So we're a very green company save a lot of trees, save a lot of gas, which is good. I remember I remember like two primary resources for actors. It was that little pink book you could only get in New York or L.A. that listed the upcoming productions. And then, of course, the newspaper, which I forgot what it was called, Backstage. Backstage. And I remember those were like the two resources that I remember at the time. Yeah, and, it, and there was very few, and it's really changed a lot now. By putting it online, actors can actually get more more specific information for what they need as opposed to the generic information. So they can find out not only who's casting what, but who the assistants are and the associates and what the casting directors like when they audition, what they don't like when they audition. So it helps streamline the process and really get the actors to be able to take control of their careers. Have you had any um, really great success stories uh, have, that have come through now casting as a result of, the, of your process that you've, you guys have participated in? Well, there's been actually a good number of those, and, and one of the ones was more through the L.A. Actors Online, which became now casting, was uh, Catherine Houston, who is now an Emmy Award-winning actress for uh, Desperate Housewives, and she was also on The West Wing. And she came here from Florida with very little acting experience in her 50s, and she had a great marketing mind, so she really took to the streets and really used the resources that we had to, to build her career. And when she was killed off on the West Wing, which was Aaron Sorkin's show, it's about 10 years ago, I guess it was, uh, they actually had a moment of silence in the house, in the, in the California house, wow. in the assembly. Wow. <laughs> All for a, for a storyline. <laughs> yes, for a storyline, which was pretty amazing. And that was, that was, that was a, a big success story. Catherine's a, a great lady, and she's wow. done a great job. Does the, has the geography um, changed then for actors? Because you used to have to be New York City or Los Angeles-based, period, to, to be in the profession. Does the technology and now castings directory and the players' directory allow actors and actresses to be everywhere and participate in the, in the process? 
It does. I think that actors can establish themselves in all sorts of different areas now. And the great thing is, is now that it's on the Internet, a lot of actors who used to not be able to be in Los Angeles, maybe they were shooting in on location, now they can actually record their own auditions and upload them through Now Casting and have those auditions included in everybody local. And more and more with the global structure going on, we're seeing a lot of globalization of casting where the casting decisions might be mean, being made here in Los Angeles or New York, but their pool is coming from Vancouver, and it's coming from Ontario, and it's coming from Texas, and it's coming from Michigan. So being able to see these talent and see their headshots and their resumes and being able to get these auditions instantaneously just as quickly as they can from the local actors has really made a difference for the actors. Yeah, I would think so. And I would also think it kind of like curbs some of the, you know, big casting or cattle calls that would happen in different cities. Um, yes, you know, it that definitely has. Streamlines it. Um, how do um, you most often see, you know, when I, what I admire about actors is that, you know, they have the creative talent profession, but they also have to be very savvy in the business and marketing side of it, which is um, something that at TV Guestbert, we really have to work with our experts into, into bringing them you know, figuratively online into that process. Does this help actors succeed or, or does it, is there a drawback to the skill set that they need in order to help f- um, foster their own careers? I think that actors have a very creative mind, just like a lot of the experts might have their business mind. They're very centered on one thing. And just like the, the problems that you've had in terms of it's not just about your career, about your, your talent. It's about how you manage yourself. Yeah, it's, and, it's such the big part of it. That's a huge part, and, and agents get 10% of your, of your money, so you get 90%, so you need to do 90% of the work. Right. And it's difficult to extrapolate that from the actors and say, you have a business, treat it like a business. Right. And the ones that do are the ones like Catherine and the ones like uh, Jenna Fisher, who is, um, plays um, uh, Pam on yep. The Office. Mm-hmm. She, she, is, she was also a, a member of Now Casting uh, in her, early in her career. And to see those actors really making their face seen by the people that they've met, managing their contacts, and those are the type of tools that we put together for the actors to help them create a business. Bob, we're going to take a quick break. I'd love for you to stick around. I want to get your um, thoughts on Anne Hathaway and James Franco uh, uh, hosting the Academy Awards and uh, this coming um, winter, spring, uh, February. So stay with us. We'll be right back. I'm Jackie Jordan for uh, The Jackie Jordan Show. It's presented by TVGuestbert.com. The Jackie Jordan Show with host Jackie Jordan on TVGuestbert.com. Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara and worldwide. I feel like dancing, dancing, dancing. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, find his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Details Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. The Jackie Jordan Show, presented by TVGuestbert.com on News Press Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara. Close both locks below the window. Welcome back. I'm Jackie Jordan, hosted here by TVGuestbert.com on, on 1290 AM, KZSB. We are sponsored today by CX2Wristband.com. It's the wristband or the holographic chip, the non-pharmaceutical chip that helps you sleep at night and give you en- gives you energy during the day. I'm on the phone with, uh, on the line right now with Bob Stewart, founder and CEO of Now Casting and CEO of Players Directory. So Bob, what do you think about the casting choices for host this year of the Academy Awards 2011? I think it's a precursor to some changes. Uh, I think that the Oscars have been slowly declining in viewership. Actually, it's been ever since back in the 90s. They've had a steady drop in decline. And I think the problem is is that they're grounded and rooted in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think that by taking this choice and going with Franco and Hathaway, they're trying to reach a younger audience. And it might be a great precursor to some changes they might make in the presentation styles that we'll see in the 
Oscar Awards this year. They probably should have done something like this for Miss America years ago because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that was an institution that literally just got eroded by, um, in my opinion, just like poor producing and, and just not keeping up with with the times and the changes. Um, but what other? What do you think? Will uh, you think it'll just be more f- uh, fresh sh- uh, shtick or uh, comedy or what do you think will make it unique or well, draw on a different they're audience? A chance. Well, they're taking a chance because usually most of these people are their hosts or their comedians. Uh, they're really experienced actors, and both Franco and Hathaway are, are very experienced actors, but they're people that are used to being in front of a live crowd. By going with Franco and Hathaway, they're really drawing the younger audiences that have seen them come up through the 20-somethings and maybe the early 30s who are their fans. And I think by going with that, this is hopefully going to open this up to have a little bit lighter tone to it as opposed to the ostentatious type of presentations they've done in the past. And hopefully this will make it not, I don't really want to say the hip or younger generation because that's not their total audience, but it will make it more contemporary because it's so grounded in 70 years of history. Now it's time to revitalize it and turn it into something spectacular. I think it's got a lot of potential. Yeah, I think that I, I think that's a really great uh, take and, and possibility on it. Do you have any picks this year for the uh, uh, our favorite um, choices in, in movies or films or actors that you've seen for the upcoming Academy Awards? It's going to be an interesting year. I think that there's no uh, no African American. I don't think of any people of color that are in the top picks for actors, uh, which is kind of disappointing considering we've had such great uh, movement in that over the past years. But the early things show that Social Network is probably going to be an up and comer for certain, and it was an incredible movie about uh, obviously about Facebook. But I think it's very poignant. That's about the closest thing I've heard in terms of the front runners. We've still got a lot of Academy Award winners or potential Academy Award nominees coming up here in the next couple of months. So that's yes. when to push them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I did see the uh, social network, uh, Facebook, it wasn't called Facebook, it was called Social Network. I really thought yeah. it was a great film. I thought it was a fantastic yeah. Um, a fantastic movie. Well, Bob, thank you so much for joining us. And if anybody wants to find out more information about uh, founder and CEO of Now Casting, what, where would we go? Do we go to nowcasting.com? You can go to nowcasting.com or theplayersdirectory.com. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Bob. My pleasure. The Jackie Jordan Show with host Jackie Jordan on tvguestbert.com. Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara and worldwide. Alex Detail was a child genius who saved the world from the evil harvesters. But a decade later, this mysterious alien force has returned and Alex is no longer a prodigy. Now, in order to save the world again, he must survive his kidnapping, find his evil clone, and get his ship to the planet Pluto, where he will uncover the universe's ultimate power. Alex Detail's Revolution, a thrilling new novel by Darren Campo. Buy online or wherever books are sold. Together can never be close enough for me to feel like I The Jackie close. Jordan Show, presented by TVGuestbert.com on News Press Radio KZSB, 1290 AM, Santa Barbara. I'm Jackie Jordan, hosted here by TVGuestbert.com, where the industry show with the experts, and we're in our final segment this hour. We repeat here tonight at 10 p.m. if you missed the beginning of the show. We also re- air this Sunday at 5 p.m. on AM tw- 1290 KZSB News Press Radio, Santa Barbara, and on the homepage of TVGuestbert.com, and also we air on Sony's Blip TV. And if you want to friend us, join us on Facebook at Jackie Jordan Inc., TVGuestbert.com. Today's show is sponsored by the non-pharmaceutical hologram chip and wristband that helps you sleep at night and gives you energy during the day. Check us out at cx2wristband.com. And I'm in the uh, studio here with uh, studio producer Richard Dugan and executive producer Richard Weiner. And also it, it handling all of our production elements is Dylan Hanley. Thank you guys so much. And nobody has made fun of me at all this episode for the funny music choices I've picked. And I know we've been coming into Train, but you know I know Train's up for a Grammy nomination and I'm like really into them right now. We've been talking this whole hour about casting. Uh, we had Jane Jenkins and Janet Hershenson on from the casting company. And they have a fabulous book out called a Star is Found, Our Adventures, casting some of Hollywood's biggest movies. And I love chatting with them because they always give me these great classic Hollywood stories. And they're always so spot on about what kind of actor is uh, 
coming and going and uh, what kind of actors, um, you know, they think are going to be up for the Academy Awards. And we also talked with uh, Bob Stewart, who uh, is the CEO and founder of Casting Now. And what interests me particularly about Bob and his um, business uh, paradigm is because they have a... They have an infrastructure set up where actors can, a resource center basically, for actors and casting directors, which reminds me of what we do at tvguestbert.com. We are a media development company and also also a publishing company and a production company. And what we do at tvguestbert.com is we match experts with media opportunities and ups, unscripted television, which is unlike what Bob does. He does it in scripted television. And joining us on the phone right now is one of our seasoned guestberts and a really successful in what she do, what she does. She's a, kind of a sexy mom expert, Miyoko Fujimori. Miyoko, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. So we've been talking about the whole process of casting um, uh, and being on a, on a scripted program, but you've ha- been had a lot of experience being on um, unscripted programming and reality shows and, and participated in the casting process of that as well. Tell us about some of the shows that you've per- been on. Uh, well, Style Networks, What I Hate About Me, was a fun reality show. And then, of course, uh, Denise Richards' reality show going on and being able to teach her some pole dancing moves was a fun thing, too. Reality show moves really quickly, I feel. You know, I mean, there's still long shoot days, but as far as my spot as a guest for in there or as an expert, I'm usually in and out of there in a short amount of time. So it's a really fun experience. And what um, you did on What I Hate About Me, which is just such a funny reality show title, um, is that you're, um, you're this you know, sexy mom expert. So tell us what you did on the actual show. You redecorated a bedroom to help heal a broken relationship. Yes, and it's funny. It, it was a young couple who was having problem prioritizing their intimacy, which is not something that you generally will see. Young couples have time. They had no children. You know, they may have a job that keeps them. They had a dog um, that was kind of overruling their lives. So they were having this dog that was taking over their bedroom, and they really weren't prioritizing their intimacy. So I wouldn't say it was a broken relationship, but they both had said that they would like to have some more intimate time. And so what we did was kind of take the dog off the bed, take the ironing board out of the bedroom, and redid their whole look and feel. So we added some candles, new bedding, um, some really fun, sexy ideas for things that they could do together to enhance their intimacy. And so it it made it just a really fun time, and they had a great time with it. What I really enjoy uh, working, uh, doing with you and working with you as an expert, a television expert, is that you understand what your content is and you're able to uh, translate it to different storylines. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, and I, well, I think that's I think <laughs> I think that's the skill. I think that a lot of times, as as, as experts, um, we get stuck in knowing and understanding what it is we do, and we do it a certain way, but we don't know how to storytell it in a variety of ways. And what you were able to do on um, this the Style Networks opportunity was you were able to take your you know sexy mom expertise and and bring it to uh, you know the couple in the in the bedroom. Uh, which is what you do. Tell us a little bit about what you did on the Denise Richards uh, show that was on E! Well, for Denise Richards, it, it was more of that sexy mom help needed. She was feeling like she wasn't in that sexy mode, and why can't moms be sexy too? And so she did a few things that Are all day. moms in trouble if Denise Richards is not feeling like a sexy <laughs> mom? <laughs> you know, I think that all moms are potentially not in trouble, but we're all affected by having kids and being in relationships and working and, and being in this environment and that, and that, that speaks we are to right you, now. Which is why you talk about it, because you're it also does. a mom. Yes. It does, because we think that we're supposed to be able to do everything and be sexy, and that's the norm. And that's just not, and that's not the right kind of message to be sending to our young moms and our seasoned moms know that they shouldn't have to live up to this weird standard that we've created. Yeah, and I think so, that as, you know, um, as media producers, that's we completely perpetuate that, like we're sexy all the time, mom thing, all the, you know, all the time, or at least that's what it looks right. like. 
That's well, of course, it. because when I go on TV as an expert, I'm done up with my hair done and my makeup. And if you looked at me right now, you wouldn't be seeing that. <laughs> That's what's so fantastic about radio. <laughs> you can phone it in. Exactly. Um, and so tell us a little bit about the casting process that you went through for um, these two particular bookings. Uh, well, in both situations, I was able to speak one-on-one with the producers, be it either segment producers or executive producers, and I think that's really a key part of the process, Right. being able to talk with the producers about what they're looking for, how to really tailor the show and, and my appearance and what I'm bringing to the table for them. So sometimes it, it almost was me creating the segment for them in a way, you know, hey, this is what I could do, what about this, and, and sharing with them what my areas of my message are, and then being able to craft that in into their existing production because most of the time they already have something in mind. That's so true. You so and, you understand it. And, and I have you to thank for that. To be honest, the more um, inquiries you guys send me, the more I have to search my brain, and it gives me ideas to think outside of the box and come up with different hot topics and and possible segments. Well, that's why you're good at it, because I, I know from, you know, being a producer, you have an idea in, you, you know, you already have a pre-scripted idea in mind, but when the guest potential comes to the table with a whole layer of, you know, icing on the cake that I know that myself or nobody else in the room even considered, it is like, it, it, it's like a treasure, you know, which yeah, is what, sure. which is what it, you, you know, were able to do with those, um, the, those two, um, those two opportunities. You know, I haven't mentioned yet, but you're the author of the Practical Strip Tease Guide. Um, so tell us about that. Not that Being we need to. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm we're <laughs> sitting here with two gentlemen in the studio. <laughs> they perk up in their ears. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the most fun that I had with the book was really from the creative aspect. I was a speaker already at that point, sharing my message with women and and bringing them kind of this okay, open forum for communication about sexuality and sensuality. But writing the book was such an amazing process because you kind of have this idea in the back of your head that, oh, I could never write a book or nobody would ever want to buy my book or, you know, and I completely went against the grain and self-published and did everything wrong and ended up being successful in the end. And that was such a tremendous experience for me. I had hired a literary agent to consult with me. She told me I was stupid for printing so many books, and yet I've been through, I'm on my fourth run of the book. So it was really nice to be able to see someone who just has a message and an idea be able to get it out there and do it in a way that everyone else says is going to fail, and you succeed at it. So if anyone out there, especially guest birds, it's so pertinent and important to have that book because that ultimately is the reason I am booked on things. Somehow having a book, having something that they can hold in their hand while you're on TV gives you so much credential. <laughs> and you know, anybody who does have a book actually deserves it because to construct a book and put a book together is no easy task. It's like it taking, yeah, it's like taking everything you know and funneling it into like 250 pages and and, and organizing it and, and writing it. So, it, it's uh, congratulations on that. If anybody wants to find out about Miyoko's book, you can. Uh, pra- it's practicalstriptease.com. Her profile is on tvguestbert.com. Miyoko, thank you so much for joining us, and to all of our listeners today, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Jackie Jordan, hosted here by tvguestbert.com and sponsored by the non-pharmaceutical hologram chip that helps you sleep at night, CX2, wristband.com. Thank you guys so much.